hello, hello, hello. Um, in today's video, I'm going to answer your questions. Any questions you have, this can be about investment, finance, anything coronavirus related, economy related. Um, while we're waiting for people to come on, let me know where you're watching from in the comments below. And if you have any question, also write a comment. Again, if you missed the beginning, I'm going to answer any questions you have about personal finance, investments, stocks, um, the economy, retirement portfolios, coronavirus stuff, how to work more productively at home. Um, I can answer, talk about that at length as well because I've been doing it for years. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I'm going to bring that up on my phone so I'm notified of any questions. Talk about that at length as well because I've been doing it for years. Yeah. Okay. So I'm doing that. I'm trying to mute it. Okay. So while we're waiting for people to come on and ask questions, <laughs> I'm going to talk today about, or I'm going to try to answer why the stock market is up even after the U.S. released the worst economic news in probably the country's history um, earlier this morning. So if you're new to the stock market, welcome. It's a crazy time. It doesn't make a lot of sense most of the time, but even 13 plus years into doing this, today makes no sense whatsoever to me. Um, I'm going to try to go through it and explain what's going on in the market, why the market is up as of this recording. Let's see. Still 300, 400 points after the U.S. released the worst economic news, arguably, in, it, in history for the country. And with coronavirus deaths going likely going over a million today worldwide, I'm going to try to explain my thoughts on why the market is going up. Again, if you have any questions, comments, let me know. I'll answer all your, your questions after we talk about this briefly about personal finance, retirement funds, all that kind of stuff. Also, let me know in the comments below where you are watching from. I'd love to know where you're watching from. Okay, so the U.S. this morning, actually last week, released unemployment statistics for the first time kind of after this whole coronavirus lockdown stuff hit the United States in full force. 3.3 million people filed for unemployment last week. Their previous record before that was in 1982, and it was 690,000. That sent the stock market falling, like it should. Horrific news, not only for those people that are unemployed, their families, the communities, the U.S. as this continues to grow, um, the world as this continues to grow, all these kind of things. It's horrible for everybody. Today... The U.S. So the new record for unemployment in one week is 3.3 million. Projections for this week's were in the four to kind of four and a half million range. They came in at 6.6 .6 million this week in one week. So the previous record was 690,000 two weeks ago. Then it jumped to 300 and, or 3.3 million last week and 6.6 .6 million this week. So we've almost seen a 10x increase in unemployment filings or of the previous record unemployment filings in the last two weeks. That is absurd. <laughs> Almost more including the backlog of which they don't even have an estimate for, including the backlog due to the overwhelm of the system, of uh, the state systems for unemployment. This number is only gonna continue growing higher. We're already over 10 million, including the backlog for people that have filed unemployment or are going to file unemployment in the last two weeks. Essentially, this means that 3% of the United States workforce or population, uh, rather, has filed for unemployment in the last two weeks. Horribly sad. Horrific data. Um, there's no sugarcoating. It's the worst economic news, arguably, in U.S. history. Worse than anything in the Great Depression, um, especially because of how fast this has come. This literally has come out of nowhere in the last two months. 
and then all of a sudden people are fighting for mass unemployment. And this goes on top of the UK having more than 1 million file unemployment in the last two weeks. Spain is just under a million. Most other countries haven't reported that data yet. This is going, the economy is, I talked about this in one of the other video, live videos last week, is the economy is coming to a complete stop. Never in world history has something like this happened. Um, I can't think of another time, and I've studied an enormous amount of world history, financial history. I can't think of another time where the world economy just completely stops. The plague back in the 13, 1400s, maybe, but again, the economic data from then is at best um, incomplete, at worst, pretty much non existent, or at best, or at worst, pretty much non existent. So in modern world history, we've never seen something like this. And frankly, it's, it's going to get worse. There's an estimate I saw that 47 million American jobs are at risk due to their being in the service industry, things like hotels, restaurants, uh, tourism, uh, airplanes, all this kind of stuff is, again, shutting down. 47 million people, the jobs are at risk. That is, a, again, I, I, I'm trying to put these in context, but we've never seen something like this in world history. That would be unprecedented. Unprecedented. And at the height of the Great Depression, employment, unemployment was 25%. If we hit that 47 million rate, we would be at an un, unemployment rate north of 32%. So again, this would literally be unprecedented. And this is go, uh, going to continue happening worldwide. So having said that, the stock market is up today. Why? In part, it's due to the Russian and Saudi Arabian governments agreeing, tentatively agreeing to cut production on oil, which caused the oil price crash and prices, at least we went to, um, we went out yesterday to get some food me and my wife and gas prices in the Tampa area, at least where I live in the Riverview, um, kind of South Shore, Tampa area, was 183. Never seen it that low. Last time I saw it that low, I was probably in high school. Uh, and that was in South Dakota. Down here, I've never seen it even close to that low. So oil prices shot up immediately 25%. And this is why the stock market is supposedly rising. So logically, you think about it, worst economic news in U.S. history, horrible economic news worldwide. Gas prices rise 25 to 30 percent like that, and the market is going up. It makes no sense whatsoever. Again, if you're new to the stock market, welcome. It makes no sense. But there's something else at play here that I want to talk about. What I think is the real reason the market is rising is the US Federal Reserve, I think last week or the week before, it's, it's hard to tell, all the, all the news is kind of melding together at this point, it's coming so fast, that the US Federal Reserve, not only are they reverting to some of the tactics and that they had used during the Great Recession last, uh, in 2007, 2008, 2009 time period, printing more money, uh, freeing up liquidity and cash and putting more cash in the economy, stuff like that. They also are now legally allowed to buy ETFs, which means they can buy stocks. The Federal Reserve, United States Federal Reserve, supposed to control the money supply, supposed to control inflation. Now, essentially what that means is that they are market makers. Market makers are people that control the market and essentially due to their large um, portfolios, in this case it would be trillions of dollars, can control what the market does up and down it can kind of level things out is I think what they're doing. They're trying to level out the market crashes. They don't want the volatility from the last couple of weeks where thousand points up, 2000 points down, that kind of stuff. This is scary because essentially what it means is the United States Federal Reserve in concert with the United States government is manipulating the market to some degree. If they are allowed to buy ETFs, that means they're allowed to buy stocks. If they're allowed to buy stocks, that means they can prop this, keep the stock market at a certain level, which I think, again, is what they're trying to do. 
Do I think there's some mass conspiracy to this? No. Do I think there is some mass kind of reason, nefarious reason for this? No. I think they're doing it to stem panic. But as somebody who's been in this world of finance investment for 13 plus years, it makes me incredibly uncomfortable. When an entity of any kind, I don't care, I'm an American, I love America, um, I don't want any country con essentially controlling their stock market. Because then you can't trust the prices, then you can't trust uh, the stock market levels, then you can't trust a lot of other stuff. If they're really doing this, and again, I truly think they are, based on what was released last week and that they can buy ETFs and mutual funds and those kind of things, which again, means they can buy stocks. Because the volatility has dropped significantly over the last couple of weeks, even though the news keeps getting worse and worse. We're about to go over a million cases worldwide today of coronavirus. New York State itself is probably going to pass 100,000 cases just by itself, either today or tomorrow. Most states in the United States still aren't testing very much. The worst, arguably the worst economic news in United States history dropped this morning in terms of unemployment and stocks are up. It makes no sense whatsoever. Um, by my estimates, I've, as of this recording, I've evaluated 1,665 companies from 35 different countries all over the world in the last 16, 17 days. By my estimates, stock prices would have to fall another 30, 20 to 34, uh, 20 to 30% for them to be considered, for stocks to be worldwide to be considered cheap. I have a couple of buy orders and they haven't been hit yet or they haven't been filled yet because stock prices continue going up. And frankly, again, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever why they're going up unless the Federal Reserve is essentially making the market. And again, that's scary because that's manipulation. Again, I don't think there's anything nefarious by it. I think they just don't want people to panic. They don't want the stocks to drop because they don't want people to panic even more than they already are. It also doesn't make sense, the stock market going up, because, again, the world economy is just grinding to a halt. And it's not even grinding slowly. It's grinding over just the last month. It's just pretty much stopped. We are almost 100% guaranteed to go into a recession. The next time the data is released by the, um, you have to have two, considered to be in a recession, you have to have two quarters of negative GDP growth. That will happen probably in July. I think we're already, <laughs> we're pretty much already in a recession because again, the economy has just stopped. But for technically the, the technical definition of a recession, that'll probably be announced in July. This it's going to get worse in the short term. In the long term, the world will be fine. It will change the world, this coronavirus stuff. And I'll talk about that in another video. It will massively change the world, things like education and universities and how we work and all that kind of stuff. It's going to massively change the world, probably for the better, in my opinion. But in the short term, it's going to hurt and it's going to be bad. What I'm telling everybody I talk to about this is to build cash if you can. Stay healthy. If you have excess cash or you have excess um, um, expenses you can get rid of, do that. If you can build cash in any way by selling stuff on eBay, by selling stuff online, by doing um, freelancing work of whatever, do it. Again, we're in literally unprecedented times. Historically, the people and companies that do best are companies that have low debt and high cash levels. Those are the best companies or the companies that perform best generally in recessions. Same thing for people. You have low debt, you have high cash, or you have cash reserves at least. You will do better than most people. So what – let me check to see if there's any comments or questions at this point first. Before I go any further, so what? Let me check see if there's any comments or questions. So first, again, if you're just watching this now, um, 
make sure to write a comment, ask any questions about personal finance, investment portfolios, stocks. Um, can you get that again? Uh, personal finance, retirement funds, stocks, uh, coronavirus stuff, economy stuff, anything you want to know about. And I'll get to it. Um, after I kind of finish talking about this initial stuff, what I'm talking about in the market making no sense. So what does this mean for you personally is what's probably going to happen worldwide is people are going to continue losing their jobs. People are going to continue getting furloughed and laid off, whatever you terminology you want. Unemployment is probably going to skyrocket. We're probably going to go into recession. Things are going to get tight. Even in the United States, they're going to get tight. They're probably going to get bad for a lot of people. This could, it, depending on how long this lasts, could lead to foreclosures and bankruptcies and stuff like that. This is another thing I want to bring up is I keep seeing people talking about banks and car loan companies uh, and mortgage companies and student loan companies either writing off debt or, or um not going without debt or going without your payments for let's say three months. It's the right thing to do. It's probably going to happen. It's the morally right thing to do. <laughs> What's your account number and routing number? I'm not giving that out there, uh, Steve. <laughs> what, what that's good. And, and that should happen and it probably will happen. But you have to think about the other side of things as well. If that does happen, banks will either go out of business or they will restrict loans and credit and funds so severely that nobody will be able to get any money. Because banks, for the most part, are very thin margin. They, they don't earn very high profits for the most part. They, they operate on what's called the float. So they, they let you invest money here. They can invest it at here and they make money on the spread. So they can take a loan out here, loan you the money at this higher number and they make what's called the spread here. The spread is not very, the spread is not very wide. Typically banks are super close to going out of business, not not all the time, but they they don't have huge profit margins like people think. So if people stop paying their uh, their payments, sorry, my cat is trying to get in my face right now. If they're not getting payments for three months, many games, banks are going to go bankrupt. Many banks are not going to have funds to loan money. Many banks will extremely tighten up their their loan lending if they do have money to lend and this will this will choke whatever kind of recovery there is after this happens again is it probably going to be necessary that where people are i'll answer that next um so it's probably going to happen it's the morally thing moral thing to do it's the it's the right thing to do but you have to think about the other side of things. Same thing goes for car companies. If they don't have cash, they can't loan you money or they can't loan you money or they can't give you money, sorry, to buy a car. If these loan companies for universities aren't getting any money, all these companies act the same way when they loan you money. They operate on the spread. So if none of these companies are getting cash flow for let's say three months, Many of them are going to go bankrupt and the market is just going to completely tighten up. There will be no liquidity. There will be no cash available. There will be no loans available, which would, again, further choke off the economy because most companies worldwide and frankly, people worldwide, highest corp corporate debt levels in world history, which means companies, highest personal debt levels in world history right now, that's you and I, highest credit card, I think highest credit card debt in world history, highest car loan debt in world history, highest government debt in world history. 
So this means we are incredibly highly levered with debt as a society, as a world society. This has been, and this has been going on for more than a decade with the starting the Obama era with the uh, last crash government and companies around the world lowered interest rates so low that it made made debt cheaper and easier to get for companies and also for people because they wanted to keep the economy going this also leads to why most companies worldwide don't have any cash most companies worldwide have more debt than they have cash and they have more debt than they have cash flow again i've, I've researched almost 1700 companies stocks in the last 17 or so days in 35 countries this is a worldwide problem the Federal Reserve banks worldwide have manipulated the interest rates so low for so long. They've incentivized companies and governments and people to take out more debt than they can afford based on their cash flow. This is going to be a major problem, again, if you're not getting paid for three months or six months or however long this ends up going. Not only for us or companies. Many companies are going to go bankrupt, most likely. And governments could go bankrupt as well. You, I, if this goes a long time, governments go to go bankrupt. We don't know. Again, we're in completely unprecedented times. We don't know what's going to happen. Um, and I want to say this. I'm generally a very optimistic person, extreme optimism. I look for the optimism and everything, the positive side of everything. This has been building for a long time. This isn't just due to the coronavirus. This has been going on for more, to, more than a decade with this uh, low interest rate and negative interest rate stuff. Essentially, governments and federal reserves worldwide have been manipulating the market to get people to get the economy to go. And that's led to highest debt levels, corporate debt levels ever, highest government debt levels ever, um, and relatively low cash flow. What does that mean? 80 to probably 90 percent of the companies i've evaluated of the 1700 have more debt than they have cash and have more debt than they have cash flow that means 80 to 90 percent of these companies that i've looked at worldwide are in trouble over the next three months if they don't get paid this is the same thing when i went to dubai last year on a business trip i talked to two companies in person both of them had massive cash flow issues that i was trying to help them solve and one company, I even sat down with the owner of the business, founded the company, great guy, founded the company, ran the business. And I looked at his cash, cash, cash flow statement with him and his um, company accountant in the room together and my partner. And I sat him down and I said, what you do you understand what this means? I circled some stuff on the cash flow statement. I said, do you know what this means? He said, it means we're having trouble getting cash payments. I said, yes. But also, do you know what this means? He said, no. I said, this means if you don't get paid or start getting paid faster or fix your cash flow issues, you have, if people stop paying you, you have one to three months before you go out of business. And he said, yeah, I know. This is how most companies are operating worldwide right now. This is not a U.S. thing. This is not a even Europe thing or whatever. This is a worldwide thing where companies have very little cash flow and a lot of debt. Same again with people with with people worldwide, uh, companies worldwide, governments worldwide. Same problem because this has been going on again for more than a decade, this low interest rate. So why this leads to the question probably of why do they, we have the low interest rates in terms of. Well, just in terms of the interest rates, why are they so low? The interest rates were so low in the Great Recession to get people to buy more, to do more loans, to take out more debt, to keep the economy going. That was the plan, but they kept it going too long. They essentially, by keeping it going for the most part for the last, what, 12 years, have incentivized people to take on more debt and companies to take on more debt than they can afford to pay. This... This combination of this coronavirus and this low cash, low cash flow and high debt is going to be bad, really bad.
again, I don't know how bad. Nobody does. Um, things could turn around tomorrow. I don't know. I'm not a forecaster. I'm not, I don't like projections. I'm just saying based on my experience and study of world history and financial history and economics, this is going to get bad. Um, that's why I'm telling everybody I talk to to build cash, stay healthy. If you have a job that shouldn't go away, you are lucky. Um, if you have been laid off or you think you might be laid off, start learning about online business. If you have questions about that, let me know. For example, um, here's and here's just one example on that is, let's say you're a yoga, yoga instructor. And you obviously can't go into the office anymore. You can't do, do your yoga sessions or teach yoga in person anymore. Do your videos of yoga. Either post them online on YouTube um, for free or post them on your website and try to get people to pay for them that way. There's a lot of stuff you can do online. Um, and frankly, this is an entire another video that I'm going to talk about how this coronavirus is going to change the world. Um, so I don't want to get into too, too much into that. But. Like I said before, I'm an extremely optimistic person, but I'm also realistic. This and with my knowledge of history and economics and finances, you need to be prepared and have as much cash as you can and cut expenses if you can or where you can and stay healthy. Until we know what's going to go on with the market and the market ma manipulation that I talked about earlier um, or the coronavirus, how long it's going to last or a vaccine potentially, or any of this stuff we're talking about, build cash, stay healthy. That's the two best things I can recommend in terms of pretty much a general recommendation for everybody. Um, okay, so a vaccine potentially, or any of this stuff we're talking about. Okay, so, so far, I have one question. Um, again, went through that whole thing. Talk about why the market's been uh, going up, why I think it's being manipulated right now, um, and to avoid panic and how we're literally in unprecedented times in world and economic history. I want to preface this whole thing. Yes, the death or the health and the death tolls and the kind of hu humanitarian aspect is going to be horrific. It's going to be bad. I understand that, but I'm not qualified as a doctor. I don't study medicine enough. I don't study. I study science, but I don't stu study it enough um, compared to economics. That's why I'm not talking about that side of things. A lot of people are talking about those things. Not enough people, in my opinion, are talking about the economic aspects of this. And it's again, build cash, stay healthy until we know more. That's about the best advice I can give you, um, unfortunately. I'm still looking at stocks, even though I think the um, stock market is being manipulated, but I have specific buy orders at buy prices that unless those get hit, like the stock drops to that level, they won't be bought. And again, with the stock market continuing to go up as of this recording, still, oop, I can't bring it up again. Um, last, of, last look, it was up 300, 400 points still. Makes no sense whatsoever makes no sense what the market's doing. Um, if you don't know what you're doing in the stock market, be extremely careful, extremely careful. You either need to find somebody like me you can trust to help you go through your retirement funds or your budgets or your stock portfolio, or you need to buy an index fund and be prepared for it to go down because index funds just track the market. If you don't know what you're doing, now is not the time to dabble. Um, People are going to get crushed in this market if they don't know what they're doing and they try to play in the market or trade in the market or gamble or whatever you want to call it. Investing for the long term like I do is will it will still get hammered probably in the short term when things get even worse in the next month or so as they're projecting. In the long term, though, America will survive and prosper.